Hey there, so today we have another review. This is a new beer from New Belgium. Uh, this is Cryo Ranger. So um, if you want to skip ahead of the review, there's gonna be a little bit of talking. So this uh, just came out. Uh, I just found it on BOGO actually. So buy one, get one in public. So really awesome. Uh, I have a few more days of that. So depending on how good the beer is, I'll maybe get some more. Um, it involves brands like uh, Juice Force and Fruit Force, which are absolutely disgust disgusting. Do not get those. Uh, but they also have the Juicy Haze, the Imperial Voodoo Ranger, which is quite dangerous. <laughs> Then I also got Dominga, so I'll review that for you guys. But this is a new brand from them. So what is Cryo Ranger? So Cryo Ranger uses uh, Cryo Hops. Cryo Hops are a uh, hot, um, hot product, I believe, trademarked by uh, YCH, uh, Yakim Chief Hops, and pretty much involves using liquid nitrogen, getting these hops in really, really, really low temperatures, like below freezing, obviously, with liquid nitrogen. And then you're um, pushing that through a screen, removing the vegetable product, and then keeping the, you know, essential parts of the, like the lupulin powder, uh, which is very much desired, uh, very much affects the uh, aromatics of IPA. So pretty much instead of using, well, pretty much the regular process of making hops it does involve some of the actual green vegetal matter. If you have never seen a uh, hop before, you can Google it. It, 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 it's, it, it. It's a vegetal product. It's green. Like it's, um, it's like throwing, you know, lettuce into your IPA. Well, not literally, but you know, there is going to be green product in there. Um, with that process, you're going to, those pellets actually, like they look like, um, if you've never homebrew before, they look like, like, uh, like hamster food or whatever, like, you know, like small rodent food, they do absorb liquid. So unfortunately for especially large scale production, you're going to lose a lot of like, um, actual beer because those pellets are just absorb, um, a lot of actual beer and you're gonna have to throw it out. Uh, with the, with these, these cryo hops is actually, you're, you're extracting all that vegetal, um, uh, matter away and then you're keeping the you know stuff that you're looking for for the flavor and aromatics and so this way you're improving the yields of your beer which is huge i mean they have to talk about like let's say you're saving you know two half barrels which is like a full barrel of beer i mean you're just selling that beer over the counter let's say it's ten dollars you know let's say it's a seven dollar ten dollar uh, a ten ounce pour for seven dollars you're getting um, let's say uh, 200 is generous so 200 Jeez, is, am I mad, 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 mad? it's somewhere around fourteen hundred dollars per half barrel, which is crazy, crazy. So for just twenty eight hundred dollars in sales of savings if you just save like one barrel of beer, depending on how big your production is. You know, if you're making probably if you're making a thirty barrel batch, you're probably losing at least a barrel right there. So twenty hundred dollars is a lot of money. So, um, but that's ideal sales and blah blah. Not actual ingredient cost into it. Whatever. Um, talking about this beer, uh, this beer has got all of it. It's got a, um, oh geez, uh, Amarillo, Citrus, Centennial, uh, Feto, Idaho 7, Sabro, um, Strata. So not all of those are going to be crowd hops. So yeah, actually this is, I believe the uh, YCH version because it has like, I think the logo, the cryo trademark thing going on now. I will say that the beer has almost no description on it and it does say bursting with exotic fruit flavors. I really hope the exotic fruit flavors are coming from the hops. Uh, 7.8% IPA instead of what Fruit Force and Juice Force are using, which is like, I don't know what flavoring compounds they're using, but they're very artificial tasting and smelling. And uh, I find them absolutely gross. So we'll find out. 7.8% uh, beer. Um, very pale beer. I mean, it honestly, looks like Pilsner. <laughs> uh, it doesn't look like Hazy IPA. Okay, so it's not a Hazy IPA at all. It's, uh, you know, I was maybe expecting a Hazy IPA, but no, this is obviously a clear IPA. Um, they're probably using just mostly Pilsner malt, pale malt at the darkest. Um, very very pale that's i mean that's a light straw it's a gold color light gold color wonderful fluffy white head uh, very nice white head but that's just beautifully clear as well it's a clear beer pretty interesting surprising i don't know i mean i should certainly smell some exotic fruits in here um again i don't know if it's a crowd i hope it's not but it's like dank so it certainly has a little bit of that kind of like, um, there's no New Zealand hops in here, but it has the file heavy thing going on. It has a little bit of this cat pee, a little bit of this Sauvignon Blanc gooseberry thing going on. Um, yeah, um, certainly some um, guava, white grape. So again, I would have guessed um, New Zealand here, but I guess, uh, or Southern Hemisphere, New Zealand slash Australia, but I guess it's really just the cryo hops. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's really light. It's lychee for days. Lychee, Longan, um, Sauvignon Blanc, Guava. 
it's pale and exotic. It's really not super rippingly juicy or anything, but just very exotically tropical, uh, exotic, exotic fruits. So not even tropical necessarily, right? A lot of tropical fruits that aren't quite that exotic, right? Like, you know, mangoes and pineapples, those are not exotic, but exotic, I'm thinking like, again, guava, lychee, longan, um, gooseberry, uh, star fruit, like kiwi, jeez, crazy. Okay. So <clears throat> the aromatics, I, I assume, are hot de derived. You know, if they really wanted to make it like um, weirdly fruity, I think they would have like thrown in some kind of weird guava extract or something that really would throw it off. But on the nose, it really smells like hop derived. Like it doesn't like show off super awkward and out of place. Like when you drink fruit force or juice, or when you smell a juice force or fruit force, it just smells wrong. Like something's up with it. Like you're like, beer don't smell like that. And I think <laughs> people have figured out that. Like people don't like it. Like, wow, that's gross. But I guess some people like it. Huh? I don't know who's drinking that stuff, but a very pale beer. So this is pretty much a, sorry, this is a double IPA 7.8. Does not drink like it. Uh, this is super lean. Um, this has to be maybe inspired by like cold IPA. It just is so lean. Like there's nothing to it. No malt. Um, like I think it's an ale fermented beer, but it almost tastes like it's lager fermented. It's just so stripped down but then again i do have it a little bit cold um but yeah falls aromatics i mean it's not as exotic fruitily on the nose or on the palate but this almost tastes a little bit like a pacific northwest beer uh, without the uh, pacific northwest ipas without the kind of soily dank earthy thing that i got from those beers also quite lacking bitterness so wow so they really pushed out like a really progressive ipa so so pale clean almost like tastes like it's lager fermented uh super exotic and and uh exotic fruity on the nose um, almost no malt to the palate like stripped clean low bitterness and it's like dang this beer is literally almost eight percent it almost drinks like like a hoppy lager i think a lot of people would have guessed this was like a you know um ipl or you know hoppy lot yeah a lot of people call some beers hoppy lagers around like four or five percent and you feel on the way down but like this is dumb dangerous it is wow that i mean i could feel the warm going down but that is dangerous there's almost no perception of this beer being such high in alcohol um because really there's not much malt to say uh, speak of it's so stripped clean and bare it's almost like a like a light lager in that sense like it's really like you know at least with like the german lager and like full malt lager you get malt like this beer is lacking that like it, again I, I i i have to look on the website I, I don't think there's rice or adjuncts in here but it also almost drinks like cold ipa like the goal with cold ipa is to get something really stripped down clean light um it's almost like an in-between of like a cream ale and a ipa yeah it's almost drinks like cold ipa crazy so drinks like cold ipa for for sure reminds me of what it was the wayfinder that i, re I reviewed that katie got from um uh, portland okay so drinks like cold ipa cryo hopped exotic on the nose lacking in bitterness strip clean super bare super drinkable huh wow uh high utility if you really want to get smashed this is a great beer for that definitely recommend it compared to some of the other wonky beers they make like the fruit force the juice force um definitely more drinkable than the i i, I could probably drink three of these easier than two of the imperial voodoo rangers maybe maybe i don't know that's hard <laughs> that's hard to say but they're pretty close in abv so i'd easily drink two of these over the imperial voodoo ranger which is actually a very good beer but it, this is so light and crushable it's a freaking double ipa wow that's really good um for me i i I, I would prefer a little bit more expressive hop character, uh, maybe something a little bit more balancing on the nose that just shows a little bit more than just the exotic fruit flavors. Um, and also the fruit flavors don't really show up on the palate. Those exotic fruit flavors sort of are quite aromatic. And yeah, there's not too much. And it's a fresh, fresh beer, right? This is Best Buy uh, February. So this was canned, geez, almost a month, a month ago to the date, a month ago to the date. So quite fresh. It's always cool to get these buy one, get ones because they roll out a ton of beer and it's always, you know, a month fresh is pretty good, right? Especially coming from... Bing, boom, bing, boom. No, all the way from Fort Collins. This is not even produced in the New Belgium facility in 
North Carolina. It's uh, all the way from Colorado. That's very good. Um, let's go with a solid 90. 92. 92. Um, that is Voodoo Ranger, Cryo Ranger. Um, it's probably even better than that, I don't want to say. I'm going to jump it up to 93. 93. Um, this is dumb dangerous. It is super high utility. If you're looking to get the job done with a crushable, crushable, crushable IPA, this really this does an awesome, awesome job. I can't remember the last time I had an IPA or hoppy American style beer just stripped down so bare. Like, I think this is even more naked than the uh, Wayfinder Cold IPA, which really started the trend. Like, this is so lean and clean and just a lack of bitterness and yeah, and it drinks nothing like seven eight. I would have no clue. I would have guessed this beer was six five seven. Let me see. Here we go. Yeah, I, I wouldn't ever get. It's just so lean. Like like I I, I can't describe it better for you guys. Like it literally, it's like it's if, if if Bud Light was double the ABV and was hopped. You know, it's just so bare uh, and with none of the off flavors, right? Um, yeah, it's even cleaner and leaner than Bud Light because it doesn't have any of those weird flavors that Bud has in those multi, you know, flavored. Like, this is such a lean, lean, lean beer. Super dangerous. Uh, 93. Uh, you guys let me know what you think. It is dumb dangerous. Cheers. Later.